Did you know that kids with longer fingers tend to be better at geography? Seems like an odd bit of trivia until you consider that kids with longer fingers also tend to be older. Now, here's an equally profound factoid for you. People who regularly attend religious services tend to live longer than people who don't. And if you make an effort not to look any deeper into that statistic, it sounds super impressive. But let's face it, at a certain point, you have to be actively trying not to look. So this tired canard is making the rounds again in a major way. Apparently, PBS ran a two-night documentary about it last weekend, and apparently somebody still watches PBS because all of a sudden I'm seeing it pop up everywhere like a zombie cockroach made of stupid. So I figured this would be as good a time as any to dive into that school of red herrings one more fucking time. And to do that, I'm going to use as my map an article by Yonat Shimron on ReligiousNews.com with the horrifically misleading headline, Attending church is good for your health. Now what? Now, I want to be super clear at the outset. That statement is indefensible bullshit and is completely unsupported by science. There is a nugget of truth behind the article, but even with the most liberal possible interpretation of the data, there is no fucking way to justify the statement, attending church is good for your health. So before we dive into this author's selectively data-blind analysis, let me address that little nugget of truth, right? On the average, people who attend church on a regular basis live longer and are healthier than people who don't. But people who go anywhere on a regular basis tend to be healthier than people who don't. People with iron lungs or advanced stages of cancer don't tend to make a lot of recreational weekly excursions. And it is literally that easy to dismiss this statistic. A fucking course people who go to church regularly tend to live longer. They're healthy enough to keep going to church regularly. So with that in mind, let's start where Shimron starts, which is a study out of Vanderbilt that found that quoting from the article, Middle-aged adults who attended religious services at least once in the past year were half as likely to die prematurely as those who didn't, end quote. Think about that for a second. Why did we go with middle-aged there? Why didn't we include the elderly, the people who were likely to die? Anyway, sounds really impressive as long as you don't acknowledge the difference between absolute and relative risk. And don't worry, she doesn't. She then describes this as the latest in a long line of studies numbering in the hundreds, if not thousands, that support the religion is good for your health conclusion. So, you know, she did a lot of research. Not quite enough to pin down the precise number of supporting studies to the nearest order of magnitude, but a lot. And look, if you're trying to look at this Vanderbilt study critically, the first thing you're going to want to know is what they used for a control, right? Like, like how does this compare to people who went to the movies at least once in the last year? Well, not only did the author not bother to ask that question, apparently neither did the fucking researchers at Vanderbilt, which means the possible confounding variables more than wash out the results if you're trying to use those results to suggest that attending church is good for your health, right? I mean, it's just as easy to explain away these data by saying that being in good health is good for attending church. So armed with this study and an even more laughably self-confounding study that found that women who attended church multiple times a week were healthier than women who didn't attend church at all, plus either the hundreds or thousands of other studies she's pretty sure also exist, she leaps to the conclusion that it is the church attendance causing the health outcomes. Of course, at this point, we get to faux skepticism where she brings up known refutations to her point as though they were unanswerable questions. She says, for example, quote, could it be that people who attend church, synagogue or mosque happen to lead healthier lifestyles? Maybe they are on the whole predisposed to eat well, exercise regularly, engage in safe sex and drink alcohol in moderation, end quote. And I'm like, but what the fucker could and maybe do in hanging out with all them other words? Because there is an answer here, and it's yes, raging alcoholics and heroin addicts don't tend to go to church as much. But instead of addressing that, she carries on as though that question was equal in mystery to the sound of one hand clapping. Her next fucking sphinxian riddle asks about people who bond over other shared interests, say knitting or poker. And then she asks, quote, has anyone studied whether these group members have lower mortality rates, end quote. And I'm sitting here thinking... Aren't you the one writing the fucking article? Why are you asking me? I mean, I I happen to know the answer, and it's a resounding yes that has been studied extensively. And yes, the people who attend regular knitting groups or poker games show the same trend of being healthier and having lower stress as those who regularly attend religious services. But I guess she couldn't be bothered to Google the fucking question even after she'd already typed it. Hell, she mentions one study that showed that weekly chaplain visits were associated with better health outcomes. And based on that, she concluded that people are healthier when their spiritual needs are met. Now, she didn't bother to link to that study, perhaps out of fear that you'd look at it and find out they were comparing chaplain visits to nothing. 
right? They didn't compare him to weekly visits from therapists or psychologists or secular volunteers or a guy in a panda suit. They literally compared it to nothing. This study showed that having more people tending to the patients in a hospital was better than having fewer. And that is being offered up as proof that there are things called spiritual needs and that those things are vital to human health. Look, the very nature of a study like that betrays the real intention of the people conducting it. They're not interested in answering questions. They're not interested in doing science. They're not interested in improving health. Their only goal is bolstering the perceived utility of their grossly overfunded facade of a social institution, and they're not afraid to piss away money on pre-confounded research to get there. This isn't just bad science. It's a lie disguising itself as science. It's a deliberate attempt to confuse people about their own health, which means that religious apologists have shown themselves willing to sacrifice sacrifice knowledge for the sake of their faith, even when it means they have to divert limited medical resources to keeping their antiquated religion on life support.